Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are back for another In the Hunt. This is going to be the Mall Rats edition at the Eon Mall located in Hanyu, Saitama. Now, I've been in Hanyu before and we covered the hard off. They also have a Gale, but we're definitely going to check out the mall as there are some retro games to be found, which is kind of a cool thing, especially in today's day and age. And then here's an exterior look. It's fairly large. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do my plug. You know what it's about, the Retro Rewire Game Tours. If you're going to be coming to Japan, if you want a tour of Akihabara or other areas of Japan, get a hold of me on my Facebook page, send me a message, book the tour, and we'll get your game hunting list all figured out. We'll find everything. Well, I can't guarantee that we'll find everything, but we are definitely going to give it our best shot. So anyhow, link in the description. Back to the mall at hand, and we're going to head into Josh in here. Now, before, if you want to check, check out the, the retro game store that we're going to be going at, I'll leave a timestamp or a, a chapter so you can skip on ahead. But for, for those of you that want to see the mall, we're going to head into Josh in. We saw a good sign of, uh, we saw Pikachu there, Mario, Tears of the Kingdom. This is a good sign for all things modern gaming. And we're going to check out the PS5 kiosk here. And the cool thing about that is look at this uh, DualSense black, uh, all black controller. That thing is so sleek looking. Absolutely beautiful that. And then here we have Final Fantasy 16. And this Josh and business, this store, it's kind of like, a, I want to say in the States, it's like the Best Buy equivalent. You could also get appliances, TVs, video games, and all sorts of other, uh, you know, gadgets and whatnot. But it's kind of interesting how they have everything merchandised here. Here's a little kid section with the lights running at a different wavelength there. But we got our Switch aisle here, and the Switch is definitely going to be uh, one of the bigger uh, selling consoles for them. Look at these fish controllers. There's actually two of them. Haven't seen those before, and they're both coming in at around 2580, 2680. And then we have the games. And some of the deals here. You know, this is going to be like full on MSRP. So sometimes it's not going to be uh, saving you a lot of money. But if you want it, they more than likely have it. Not sure what this game is as I just came in briefly to film. And when I came to the mall, just want to point out that I came across two days. But here's this little rog alley thing. And somebody was telling me about this in the comments on the Facebook page that I have. And here it is, lo and behold, by Asus. or At I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. But first time that I see that or that I heard about it in the comments and lo and behold here it's at the at the old Joshin and then the PlayStation 5 kind of taking over the PlayStation aisle here now the, there is a small section of PS4 games but look at this all this stuff is probably going to end up at the hard off junk section in a few years uh, that's that's how it usually goes with those little nub things but we have uh, what's that on the cover or what's that Final Fantasy 16 then we have Biohazard RE4 the remake so pretty cool here always nice to, to come in and check in now some of these games are used in fact let's go ahead and head over to some of the used games as some of these are discounted and some of these are actually new it's just kind of all mixed in but as you can see personally like when it comes to new games i'd rather just get them off of uh amazon or gale as gale usually has good deals but up on the second floor we have the capcom arcade now i did do a video on this place and they have tons of arcade games ufo catchers Look at this Kirby stuff. This is like the latest. And I want to say not everything is cute here. As a matter of fact, take a look at this beautiful cabinet. Look at this. We got some zombie action. Look at this red uh, this red eye here. Now this 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 thing is actually a thing of beauty. Look at this. And guys, if you know, you know, look at this powered by the Unreal Engine. It's none other than House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn. 200 yen for a play definitely worth it i love seeing this arcade cabinet especially uh you know it being sega and the cool thing about this one is that you can disable the sound as it can get pretty loud and there's also a a fan that blows for added effect kind of like that 4 4d effect but house of the dead scarlet dawn next to that they have look at this pirates dead storm special edition i love the glowing eyes there on the skull and this cabinet is also a thing of beauty and it's actually going to be the same price 200 yen and this is the great thing uh, like the arcade is definitely like the the movie theater of gaming now this one is available on the playstation not the special edition it's going to be the vanilla release which is also fun and then we have luigi's mansion arcade this is uh, developed by capcom and this is another great looking uh, arcade cabinet. Now this one is coming in at 100 yen, but if you put in two coins, you get like a, I guess two credits, that's how it rolls. 
but Luigi's Mansion Arcade. Now, I did play all three of these games. Didn't have enough time to actually uh, film everything, but definitely cool, this arcade uh, by Capcom. Now, let's go ahead and go to the Hobby Zone. And here's their website, hobby-zone.net. So you can check them out if you like. And they are, it looks like they have some kind of uh, discount deals going on. But you can get all sorts of decor. You know, we have Pokemon. We have the Studio Ghibli stuff. We got Snoopy. We got a bunch of jigsaw puzzles for all your favorite uh, animes. A lot of good stuff here. In fact, let's see here. We got the Super Mario Bros. movie puzzles. We got Splatoon. We got the Kirby 30th Anniversary one, which actually looks really, really cool. And then there's some other few um, uh, display pieces for, for Kirby. But a lot of good stuff here. Look at that. All mostly Nintendo licensed uh, products here. And that's not everything. They also had like these little pop-up paper ones. And these are going to be like the Pocket Monster variety. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the display so you can kind of get it, uh, an idea of what it actually is. Here we have some Dragon Quest ones, but this is pretty neat. And it can uh, give a little bit of flavor to the old game room. But here we have the Pokemon one, the Dragon Quest one. And I want to say like the average price was about 1500 And they have all these little toy pieces as well. So you could build like your own little uh, dream set if you like. I do like that Kirby one that's about to like swallow up uh, the enemy or whatever is before him. Definitely cool. And they have a bunch of these. And it's not just uh, Pokemon and Kirby. It's all sorts of stuff. And I believe these things are like toys or cards. and um, Or toys. Uh, rather like candy and stuff. And then up on the third floor, there's three levels to this mall. This is like the perfect mall for uh, Dawn of the Dead type of stuff. But we got the Village Vanguard. Now this store is also cool. They have a lot of gaming merchandise as well as like all sorts of anime related merchandise. And you want to take a careful look because you're going to find everything just kind of scattered about. They do they do a fairly good job of keeping everything uh, uniform. But sometimes some stuff just ends in, a, in another part of the store. But here we have all the Nintendo licensed uh, goods. There's even some like erasers of all sorts of like, uh, you know, Nintendo or Super Mario um, little items from the games. We got the, the wall of or the end cap of plushies. And then we're just going to kind of go to like a little nook here that I usually end up going to when I hit up this store which is gonna be where you find a lot of like the comic books that are in Japanese a lot of like trading cards for the Marvel and DC universes but they got a lot of cool t-shirts here a lot of like uh, they even have like Beavis and Butthead stickers Gumby like Gumby's like super old school and just all sorts of little knickknacks so here we have like a, a spider-man or spider a Superman bust and then up above we got Friday the 13th pillows there was a Joker pillow there too. And then the movie theater. Now look at this big old, maybe that's like, that qualifies as a mural because this thing is huge and it's kind of hard to see like the scale in the video, but this thing is massive and it just has like the Studio Ghibli timeline. But definitely awesome to see that. Now this Eon Cinema, it also has a lot of merchandise for a lot of movies that have released, um, you know, recently as well as like, you know, a few months back. But here we have Conan, uh, there's also like the Little Mermaid, which is new, as well as the Flash, which recently opened here in Japan, and just just all sorts of stuff, all sorts of movie stuff. They even sell like uh, these little trading cards or postcards for the movies, and then up above they have like the soundtracks. Here's like the the Fast and the Furious, the latest release, and then what's left of the merchandise for the Super Mario Bros. movie. Look at that. But definitely a lot of cool stuff if you're coming to the theater. Here's the the Little Mermaid. And then as, you know, in the entrance, there's also like these B5 sized posters, which are free. So you can definitely pick these up if you find yourself at a Japanese mall during your trip or if you're out and about. But look at this kind of a cool looking mall. And there's all sorts of stores. There's even like a music store, a Disney store, a, a few other hobby shops, um, a fully loaded food court. And there's a couple of these stores that are just purely like capsule toys. And the, the average price is going to be 300 yen with the lower end being 200 yen. And then there's even some premium ones, which unfortunately I didn't show. But those can be at about 1,000 or 5, uh, 1,500 yen and you get like a premium figure. And those are constantly changing as well as the ones that just like the regular stuff here. Here you saw like some DC, some Marvel, and then whatever the heck this is. But a lot of interesting stuff here.
Look at that. A lot of some foxes there. But you can, you can definitely spend quite a bit of time here. But here we go, the game store at hand. But before we get underway, let's back up a little. And this is going to be Furu Ichi or Furu One. Furu Ichi. It's a game store. They also sell figures, cards, a lot of cool stuff. And we're definitely going to check out their retro offerings as well as the modern stuff. In fact, that's where we're going to start. We're going to look at some of the modern stuff. And I guess before we get too far deep, here is their social media. This is their Twitter account, and this is specific to this store. So you can either look them up by their handle or just scan like the QR code. So there is that. So let's take a look at their Switch top five. And what do we have here? We got Smash Bros at one, Tears of the Kingdom at two, Breath of the Wild three, Mario Kart eight, four, and Pokemon Legends at five. And then we have Bayonetta three for 2,980 yen before sales tax. Now there is a 10% sales tax and I'm not sure if this is a tax free shop, but potentially it could be. But we got some more Pokemon action here, all sorts of great games here. We got Okami, uh, Fatal Frame, and then I believe this is the Gotobune Sisters for 4,480, which seems to be very popular in Japan. And then a few other visual novels, but they're gonna have, they're pretty much gonna have it, mostly everything here. And then here we go, uh, Kingdom Hearts there for 1,480. Not too bad of a price there. And mo the great thing about the Switch titles as well as PlayStation 4, PS5, is a lot of this stuff will have English language support. However, there are a few titles that don't. And you could definitely go to Nintendo's eShop, the Japanese site, and that'll you can just look up the game and that'll kind of tell you if it, you know, what language is supported. But here we have some Game Boy titles. We have Dragon Quest, uh, I believe that was two or three. We got some Pokemon action there for the Game Boy Color as well as for the Game Boy Advance. Final Fantasy V for 5480, Mother 3 for 7480. We got a couple of loose cards. And then behind us, we see. Now look at this. A link to the past, 3480 yen for the Super Famicom. That's definitely a little bit lower than what I see at Book Off and Hard Off, respectively. We got a couple of loose cards for the Game Boy Advance. Definitely feel free to pause. We're definitely going to slow things down a bit as we get more retro. You know how it goes. But here we have our 3DS titles. And it's not just um, software that they have here. You know, they do have a little bit of hardware. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at a special edition, a 3DS here. And it's going to be the Fire Emblem Blue 3DS coming in at 15,800 yen. And if you're into this series, they definitely have it. And the little tag here just says that it's not the new 3DS edition. It's just the standard 3DS. But as far as I know, this thing is complete. Here is our PS4 section. The PS4 is definitely... Uh, I want to say this is a, it's a pretty legendary console. A lot of stuff here. A lot of retro um, re-released games for it. A lot of great games. First party games. And um, I currently don't have a PS4. I actually sold it as I'm uh, saving up slowly for a PS5. But yeah, the PS4, just an awesome, awesome library of games for it. But here we have One Piece Odyssey coming in at 3980 I remember seeing that one at the Tokyo Game Show. We got Tales of Arise for 2780 We got some Final Fantasy Crisis Core Reunion for 3480 And then we have Nier Automata and then Replicant. For $29.80 for each of those titles. And I, I believe Nier Replicant is an HD remaster of the PS3 release. What else do we have here? We have Spider-Man, Call of Duty, all sorts of uh, uh, AAA titles here. We got some theater rhythm business there on Final Fantasy KOF 15. We got Wu Long for $4,980. Now, I remember seeing this one at the Tokyo Game Show and I'm definitely interested in playing that. I should see if it's a, if there's an Xbox One release because it looks pretty good. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary International. Now, the thing about this one is that it includes a book and it's the all about book. And I'm, I'm crazy about Street Fighter. As, uh, I want to try Cyberpunk 2077, but I definitely would like to get that book. Here's the top five for PS5. We got Hogwarts uh, Legacy, Elden Ring, Gran Turismo 7, Biohazard RE4, and Call of Duty. So a pretty solid lineup there in their top five but it's nice to see that these ps5s are easily uh, readily available we got street fighter 6 there and then on the other side we have more accessories that will one day end up in the hard off junk section look at all this 
all sorts of like uh these little things that you can replace like the the little nubs on your controller there's a lot of cat ones and i've seen a lot of this stuff already at hard off it's already making the rounds there but pretty cool and we got some amiibo action some cases what else do we have here so i'm just just a load of more games but you know, if you're into if you're into the modern stuff, this is definitely a worthy place to to come check out. What else do we have here? Well, let's let's go ahead and go retro here. We got some Wii U, some Wii titles, and we'll definitely have a a slightly closer look. We got a couple of Wii U's down below, and I believe each of those are coming in at twelve thousand. Uh, yeah, about twelve thousand eight hundred, something like that. I'll I'll put a little tag if I if I uh, said that inc the pricing incorrectly. But look at this Mega Drive. We got Dreamcast, GameCube, um, 64, Super Famicom, PS2, PS3. A lot of it's a great selection of stuff here. PSP, and they just opened up. At least that's what I, um that's the impression I was getting with a lot of their uh, signage there. And then this section was actually hard to shop, but you could um, just because the peg hooks, they, they need more peg hooks because they do have a lot of loose cards for the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom. And you could expect to see all like the first party stuff, all the big RPGs and a lot of common titles like the King of Monsters 2 there for 980. And I think 980 was like on the higher end for what they had for loose cards. Here up above, we have the PSP stuff. And I believe this is Dragon Ball uh, Kai. They had part one and part two. And these look like they're pretty solid uh, fighting games. I've never actually um, bothered to give those much attention. And likewise with this, we have the Bleach. Look how many Bleach games there is. Now they're missing part three, but they have one, two, four, five, and six. And just the other day, I saw part seven. There are seven titles and who knows, there could be eight, but quite a bit of uh, Bleach action here for the, for the PSP and two, 280 yen for part six. That doesn't look too bad and some of those are great made it to like greatest hits releases so you know that definitely says a lot about those uh bleach games but we got portable ops there for 180 yen what else do we have here we got dissidia uh dissidia 12 i believe 280 i believe this one also got an hd remaster which is available on the switch the ps4 possibly steam we got something hearts for 480 yen they also had valkyria chronicles 3 and 4 what else do we have here? It looks like we have this Amnesia Later, which is uh, some kind of uh, visual novel type of deal. Haven't seen that one before. And then we have our PlayStation 2 titles. We have the vanilla release of Dead or Alive 2, and it has the slipcover for 480 yen. I haven't seen the slipcover before. I have this. I paid 100 yen, but mine didn't have that cover, which is okay. It's all about the, the game in the end and we got some more stuff here but yeah i want to say some some pretty good stuff we got a launch title here we got kessen for 280 yen and then we have golden axe uh, the sega ages for 2480 yen almost the original price 2500 which is kind of a funny thing although i haven't heard that many great things about that release and then we have uh capcom versus snk2 for 1280 which is more or less what the game is hovering nowadays, what it's hovering at. And then we got a couple of PlayStation Vita titles, a few PS3 games, and then we're gonna make our way into the Super Famicom boxed goods. Now, as I mentioned before, I came uh, I came uh, two day in between two days, and on the second day, they actually changed this section around a little bit, and they had more games. Now, Samurai Spirits, I did pick this one up, coming in at 1,280 yen. I did beat it, and definitely uh, one I'm happy to have in that condition. It was in, in great condition, actually. And then here, this, this is one that they put out on the second day that I came, but 8,980 for Super Metroid, which is more or less in line with what's, what it's going for. And the same can be said for this uh, Super Castlevania 4 in regard to its pricing. And, and fairly awesome condition. Now, here's one that I haven't seen before. And this one actually looks pretty cool. Look at the original price, 8,800 yen. This one we saw in the previous episode in a loose cart, and it looks like it's some kind of beat-em-up. And then we got 1480 for Super Mario Kart. What else do we have here? We got uh, Final Fantasy VI. And this one is about the standard price, 1,980 uh, yen. 
and then we got some Dreamcast action. We got some GameCube. We got some N64. In fact, let's take a look at a few, a couple of N64 games. We have Rave, Wave Race 64, 480 yen, and that looks like it's complete in the box. And then 2,480 for Super Mario 64, which is a little bit slightly on the higher end. Here we have Super Mario Sunshine for 1980. If you really look, you could probably find that for half the price at other shops. We got Tales of Symphonia, which that has an HD remaster release. And it'll be, uh, for sure, it'll have English uh, subs or language. We got Mario Kart Double Dash there, Mario Party 4. We got Luigi's Mansion coming in at 1980. That's another one that's maybe you could find a lot less. But here we go, Biohazard Zero, 780. So it's above that 500 uh, yen mark. So we'll proceed with caution at this location. But 1780 for Super Mario Bros. Advance. That's not too bad. We got uh, Nobunaga and his Ninja Force for 7280. 2480 for Final Fight CD. That's actually a pretty decent price. And then we got the Arcade Collection here for 1280. And then some of these games have a small discount uh, for various reasons that uh, they have listed there on the labels. That's actually a cool cover. Kind of looks like an old school uh, flick. And then here we have our Dreamcast games. We got Samba de Amigo. We got El Dorado for 480. They also had Volume 2. We have Marvel vs. Capcom for 2480 with the Obi card and a 100 yen discount. That's not too bad of a price there. I think it's because it's sun faded. This Godzilla Generation 980. This one looks like it could be interesting. It looks like a, some kind of a, like a fighting game. We got Climax Landers there, and then there's Volume 2 of uh, El Dorado. And then the Saturn offering was a little bit sad, 280 for the wrestling game, and then 1480 for KOF 97. But the Mega Drive uh, selection was actually fairly good. We got World of Illusion there for 1780, and it's saying something about some kind of water damage. Although you know the condition of this when I was holding it and looking at it, it was actually pretty good. And that's actually a pretty good price there. What do we have? Robo Kid for 5480. And this one I haven't seen before. Something Flash. Look at this. 9980. And it looks like it's some kind of shooter. And it looks pretty good. But yeah, I definitely like that cover. And that's, uh, you know, we're going to take a look at most of these games for the Mega Drive. We got Ballas 3, 5980. And the cover art and some of the artwork on the back is actually pretty awesome. Like this one, Alien Storm 5480. Look at this artwork here. That's freaking cool. This is also on the little Sega... Um, um, Oh gosh, the little arcade mini machine. They got the, and then we have NBA Jam, but that Alien Storm, it was a, a part of that. I'm drawing a blank on the name there, but anyhow, let's continue on with the show. Look at all this selection. And I actually did pick up a Sega Mega Drive game. You know, I had to cuz some of the condition on some of, the condition on some of these games was really really good. But here we go. Let's see here. What do we have? We got Chameleon Kid for 3780. And see this artwork, this is just so cool. And this is the one that I picked up. I picked up Gunstar Heroes. It was at 79.80 before sales tax, but the condition of this was really, really good, including the game and the manual. We have Golden Axe coming in at 34.80. Look at that artwork. And they also had Part Two coming in at 42.80. Once again, more cool artwork there. Although I haven't played Golden Axe Two, only very briefly. I'm not really sure what this one is, but something Mune. Kind of a cool cover though, but it looks like a. Actually, I can't even tell what kind of game that is. But we got Shadow of the Beast for $22.80. That's not too bad of a price for that. And that's a game that I'm kind of kind of interested in playing. We have Altered Beast for $14.80. That's a really good price. And look at that artwork. That's poster quality stuff there. We got Jewel Master for $32.80. And I do like the design of some of those monsters there. Then we have Juju. Now, I believe this one is Toki. I actually have the remaster for the Switch. It's also available for the for the PS4 and the PC. We got some military game here for $59.80. In fact, they had a couple of them. And this one is uh, like super something. And it looks like it's some kind of like a strategy game. But definitely some cool artwork there. We got Zoom here. This is one. I haven't heard of this one, but $12.80. That's not too bad of a price. And then we have Storm Lord now, or Storm Lord. I believe this one is known as Risky Woods in the West, which I used to play in the arcade a long, long time ago. And what do we have? We have Strider for 2780. And the condition of a lot of these games was really good. Just want to point that out. We got Slime World for 5780, although this one looks a little bit sun faded. 
And then we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for $19.80, which isn't too bad of a price. And then we have Part 3, which is actually lower than the last hard up we were at. This is coming in at $67.80, or at least around the same ballpark. Now, this is probably the best artwork out of all the Mega Drive games, Sonic Spinball. Although I'm not too, too big of a fan of the actual game. But I love the artwork. Here we have a shooter. And then we have uh, Dai Makai Mura for $42.80. Super Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghouls and Ghosts. $99.80 for Double Dragon 2. That's a little bit pricey for that one. And then we have Dino Land for coming in at $22.80. Haven't seen this one before, but it looks like a, like a pinball game. And then we have Darius 2 for $32.80. I have this for the Sega Saturn, but I wonder how the how the Mega Drive port is. Could have some good music. Had no idea what this is, but $27.80 looks like some kind of like puzzle game. Toe Jam and Earl coming in at $22.80. That's not actually a bad price. And then we have two copies of Burning Force. Both of them are $67.80, although they do have a, a small discount for various reasons. One's discolored and this one looks like it has a dirty cover. Haven't played this one, but it could be a good one. It looks pretty cool. And then we have like another uh, Pachinko, potentially, or Pinball, one of the two. And then Battle Golfer. Look at the cover on this one. 5280. That looks like this one could be a good time. Haven't seen that one before as well. And then let's just keep going down the line here, I guess. Haven't seen this one as well either. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, something Masters. This one could be like a fighting game. And then we have Phalios for 3980 Namco did have a pretty good output on the Genesis. We have Bare Knuckle for 6780 And then next to that, we got Bare Knuckle 2 coming in for less at 5480 That's not too bad of a price, especially considering the condition of this one. I should have picked that one up as well. But I was over my budget. Bonanza Bros. Look at the dude on the left. It looks like Gargamel from the Smurfs. Just kind of bald. And let's see what else do we have here. We have Marvel Land. And then I believe this is a... What is this one? Uh, I'm not really sure what that one is. But I know they had like a, a Wonder Boy action there. This one looks pretty cool too. I like the artwork there. Kind of like a Ghibli, Ghibli-esque. We got Master of Monsters. With a cool cover. And then we have some Ballast action. But yeah, a pretty solid lineup there. There we go, Wonder Boy 3. Once again, some pretty cool artwork, but I gotta say, you know, Lance Stalker, 1480, that's about uh, on average of what I see. And then we have Rolling Thunder 2, look at this, 6980. Yeah, Namco, they also released like the Splatterhouse games for the Genesis, so quite a bit of support there. But a fairly solid lineup there for the Sega Mega Drive. And then on the PS1 end, we got 1280 for Xeno Gears. God only knows. I never played that one, but a lot of my friends did, and they swear by that one. Look at this one. I haven't seen this one before, too. That's why I always love browsing the PS1 section, because it there's always a, something strange like this. This one I've seen before. In fact, I featured it on, the, on a previous episode, but 980 looks like some kind of role-playing game. We got some KOF 98 coming in at 1480. They actually had two copies, with this being uh, the Greatest Hits version. And what do we have here? Get Backers, an adventure game, most likely some kind of visual novel by old Konami. And what else do we have here? That Legend of Mana, a little bit rough, but here we have Quizmaster Yellow, part of the Simple series, which I, I believe Success uh, had quite a few releases under that banner. But we got Tekken 3 coming in at 480 yen. That's not too bad. And some Digimon World 2480. Uh, we got some Dino Crisis 2 coming in at 980. This one can definitely definitely be found cheaper. But you will have to put in uh, a little bit of time. And what else do we have? Toshinden 2 Battle Arena. This is a great fighter. If you get the greatest hits version, that has like the plus little moniker, which adds a few things and changes a few things up. Look at this breeding stud. What a name. <laughs> by Konami Final Fantasy 7 International 980 yen and I'm not really sure what this one adds probably all the stuff that was released in the that was included in the western release all the updates we got Breath of Fire 4 that one looks pretty solid that role playing game and then we have this Capcom title which 
I see every now and then one something, but I'm not really familiar with what it's about. And then we have Ridge Racer Type 4, a solid racing game, one of the best ones on the on the PS1 library. And then here we are, we got some bad uh, some batteries for the PSP, and it looks like the 2000, 3000, and the 1000, and those are coming in at 1619. And then we got this little card reader for the N64 at 164 yen. And then various clone systems. We got Retro Bit Generations 3, which I haven't heard a lot of great things about the emulation on these systems. And then we have, what do we have here? 9,800 yen for, and it has a, a coupon for 1,500 off. So that's not too, too bad. And then here's our loose carts once again, but let's just keep moving down the way. Got some uh, GameCube uh, third-party controllers. And then here we have our Wii section. And as you can see, uh, not a bad lineup. In fact, let's pull out the last story and see what we have here. 780 yen. Now, this one has uh, some parts are in English. Some of the menus are in English, but all the story bits are, are going to be in Japanese. We have Basra 2 by Capcom. And what else do we have here? I believe... I believe um, they had a, well, they have this uh, We Love Golf by Capcom coming in at 480 yen. This one could be fun, but I believe they also have a Fatal Frame title. In fact, I know they do. We're going to pull it out right now, and that's coming in at 3480. And the, how many Fatal Frame uh, games did the Wii get? I feel like that it got like two or three. But here we have our Wii U titles. And a, and, a, and a pretty good uh, selection here. A lot of the first party titles are present. And we got Call of Duty Ghost for 1480. We got another Fatal Frame game coming in at 3280. We got Super Mario 3D Land for 980. Next to that, we got Mario Bros. Wii U at 980. And then we have Xenoblade X coming in at 3980. So not too bad there. And then we got Zombie U 980. That's a great game which is also available on the Xbox One PS4. And then here, we're just gonna take a quick peek at some of the other goods that they offer, like these figures. And I believe this is My Hero Academia. I could be wrong, but they also have a lot of these price figures, the Ichiban Kuji. This is the Dragon Ball release. And oh man, I would like to get some of this stuff, but usually I end up getting like a little plastic uh, folder, or a little cup. But here's the JoJo one, which is at, it's on sale there for 660. And then here's all the trading cards, which I have absolutely no clue about. But they had quite a bit of it in stock. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is the Hanyu Mall, the Eon Mall specifically. But yeah, a lot of great stuff. And definitely stay tuned as I have more content on the way. See you soon. Ciao.